The advantages of using mass engineered timber are well known in terms of its fast, efficient installation, a large format panel that when flat packed allows for a very efficient construction solution on site, a fraction of the weight of reinforced concrete that means it's easy to handle with less men. The only structural system at the moment that can be produced from the BIM or Revit model is mass engineered timber. And of course it's vastly sustainable. Buildings can be carbon negative from the get-go. What does this mean for Singapore? Without the data one can only surmise its impact on productivity and cost and therefore its suitability for our market. Now as the first buildings are completed, both here and overseas, Venture has real data. We know, for example, that we can achieve at least three meters squared of GFA per man day. And we expect this to more than double in the future, as we have buildings that are designed for mass engineered timber at the get-go, we have repeatable designs, and of course, multi-storey buildings with repeated footplates. But significant savings in the future as we continue to look at how to hybridise this technology in Singapore. What is the most efficient way to combine it with steel and concrete in order for the mass timber to reduce the cost, to make a building lighter and easier to construct? Ventura also has an approach where more than 70% of the value is carried out in Singapore. The design, the engineering, the steelwork, the installation is all conducted from Singapore. We rely only on the imported timber component. and Therefore, we're insulated in the future against changes in currency and the change in marketplace. Our first projects in Singapore using mass engineered timber was a glass and timber canopy at the NTU campus. Now, although a small project at around 600 square metres, it's been important because we've been able to monitor the material's performance over the last 18 months. It was chosen originally because it displaced steel with cladding. The timber, therefore, was a more practical and actually a less expensive alternative than the original design. And over the last 18 months, we have been able to take readings from the timber to ensure that it's well within its designed moisture level or its service grade. Another important project that has recently completed was a commercial light industrial building at One North. This was around three and a half thousand square meters, over three stories. The solution was a glue lamp post and beam with CLT in terms of the structure. We were enabled to complete the work from the award to substantial completion within seven months. This also included one of the first submissions and approval to the BCA. And we know that in the future that will improve. So this building has given us the first real data on how many square meters per man day that we can achieve, the usage of timber in terms of cubic meter per square meter, and many other metrics that are enabling us now to calculate and predict the cost of other building typologies in Singapore. A very different application of mass engineered timber to our projects at One North was completed a year ago for the Shangri-La Hotel at Orchard Road. This was a beautiful sculptural design that was penned by Tierra Design in Singapore. It comprised of over 50 unique large members. Those large members were then supported with a internal framework of steel in order to create the form. Now this was one of the first very complex um, structures that we've embarked on. It is also a 
application of exposed glue lamp under the rain and shine and exposed to our climate in Singapore. So this is a project that we're particularly proud of uh, and we would urge you to go down to Orchard Road um, to the Shangri-La and have a look for yourself. Beyond the shores of Singapore, Ventura has been involved in resort construction um, for more than a decade. As we speak to you today, we have projects in Lombok, in Bali, in St. Bart's in the Caribbean, and we're working towards many other projects, not just in the region, but, um, but far away. Mass engineered timber has a real advantage for these resort projects. Uh, and this was apparent at the four public areas that we were fortunate enough to construct for the St. Regis Vumuli Maldives Resort, which was designed by WOW Architects in Singapore. Essentially, we had four structures uh, designed with glue lamb and CLT. These designs required a very high level of structural integrity in terms of the coplanar use of CLT. We were able to achieve clear spans for our nature and discovery building with a, th with a thin edge. This was constructed in fully prefabricated panels that were installed over several days. Another structure, which was a three-story observation tower, was installed again in several days. Um, this used light equipment, all of the machining was done off-site, including all of the connections. And the installation was done with a good degree of supervision and planning, but with quite simple labour. We had uh, local groups of Bangladeshi workers uh, who performed an excellent job of putting these structures up. We have many other resort structures that are using the similar type of, uh, the similar type of construction. Um, one of the key advantages is the fact that we can produce a lot of product in a very short period of time. We can ship the minimal amount of components to build each building. So in the past, uh, a typical building may have required several hundred components. We can now reduce that to tens of components. Uh, and of course, the advantages of that in terms of quality, in terms of speed, uh, and in terms of the final product, um, I think are very exciting in terms of the future. Key challenges in Singapore have included getting the market to accept the notion of mass engineered timber as an element of structure. In Europe it comes natural because timber construction is common and it's hundreds of years old. In Singapore it's less common. However, as we're now completing the first projects, people can walk around and feel the space and feel the security that this technology can provide in terms of the structure. Together with examples of very tall buildings that are slated to be built this decade, including 80 stories in London. Uh, we now have a 15 story building in Norway. We have a 20 story building in Canada. Uh, and we have more 24-storey buildings that are under construction in Europe. The other challenge has been compliances required by the authorities here, the BCA and the SCDF, in terms of structural and fire safety. In Europe, quite often this can be answered using design and using factory production controls and so forth by the manufacturers. In Singapore, we are required to test these products and prove it, which we believe is a prudent approach if you're adopting a technology for the first time. This is not just true for the BCA in terms of factory production controls requiring batch sampling for physical property testing in Singapore, but also for the fire authorities in terms of proving the combustibility, the charring rate of product, and the integrity of a designed compartment. Ventura has risen to the occasion, and we have undertaken the necessary tests, both in Singapore, and where not possible in Singapore, we've undertaken tests in Europe, in Vienna. We believe now that we have a cohesive set of tests 
for fire, for structural, and of course, to mitigate our climate here in terms of termite and durability, to provide that assurance to any given developer that these products are fit for purpose. One of the biggest challenges that we see at the moment is how a government procurement entity or a private developer would go about tendering the project in the first place. For example, does he design the whole building and then simply ask the main contractor to comply with that design? This raises more challenges because what product do you design around? What approach do you design around? Therefore, we are suggesting and encouraging the uptake of performance-based tenders. And we're helping numerous public and private developers uh, in terms of formulating these tenders. For example, we would look the very first instance whether a scheme is suitable in the first place. And if we believe it is suitable, we would give suggestions to the consultants how they would go about constructing and configuring different engineered wood products. Throughout that consultation process, we will be able to estimate the volumes of materials, therefore the cost, and therefore the predicted productivity that we would get from that building typology. Now the important thing to remember is that this is the specialist and the contractor's design responsibility to ensure that these structures are fit for purpose. Therefore, compliance with regulations at the very first instance must secure the specialist in terms of the warranties that he is going to offer to his client. And at Ventura, we have compiled a very extensive fit for purpose warranty that is modelled on warranties from institutions like the National House Building Council in the UK. Uh, we believe that this is an integral part to providing confidence to use this type of construction. The last challenge, but no means the least, is of course the cost. If the specialist is providing a very large and wide scope of service, this means the main contractor will then have to take that cost, add his overheads and profit, and then that becomes a potentially an increased cost to the client. We are now looking at ways that we can reduce our scope to the minimum, to allow contractors to put in as much content themselves as possible. For example, they can undertake concrete and certain steel elements uh, under our design, under our direction, uh, and we would then provide the timber component. And that timber component can be produced on in a sub-assembly fashion with a dedicated production line in Singapore where flat packed components are assembled to produce fully finished floor, wall and roof cassettes or, or installations. And we believe that this, these solutions ultimately will del deliver the best value for Singapore, a unique solution to a unique set of conditions that Singapore has. With the first completed projects, we now have some very important data. Uh, we can now identify accurately what type of buildings or typologies mass engineered timber is best suited for in the tropics. We're now constructing and adding with every project to our BIM library. This can then shorten the design period and reduce the cost, upfront design cost for any given project. We've identified that light industrial buildings, uh, mid-rise commercial and residential buildings are suitable, clubhouses, uh, school multi-purpose halls, uh, classrooms. There are many typologies that the material is naturally suited for. But we can go beyond that. We can look at large spans and tall buildings by the use of advanced precast with steel, with the timber providing secondary component in terms of floor slabs, uh, in terms of wall cassettes and so forth. 
we see a 30-storey building may only have 40% of timber by volume, but that timber will play a very important role. It will reduce the size of the steel and concrete components that are all working together. The timber elements can then be exposed, and if you expose the timber elements, it means you don't have to use secondary finishes. There's cost savings to be made. So we are looking at how mass engineered timber can work together with concrete and steel to provide a coherent solution that also will enable a designer to express the beauty of the wood. And these are the typologies that Ventura has now identified. As I mentioned before, we see productivity being enhanced by advanced sub-assembly methodologies. The ability to flat pack all the components and provide sub-assembly with finished floor, finished wall, potentially with even M&E installations. And this is the future that we see for Singapore and we see the future going tall. And we believe it's only a matter of maybe two or three years before Asia sees its first tall engineered wood hybrid building.